welcome to another lecture and today we'll be discussing something about autoimmune hepatitis and uh, you know about type 1 type 2 uh, before i begin i would like to request you to like share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and uh, let's begin our today's topic so today's topic so today's topic is autoimmune hepatitis and autoimmune hepatitis is uh, you know it is one of the disease of the spectrum so uh, the most you know, the spectrum rises from autoimmune hepatitis, then it can be ascending sclerosing cholangitis and it can be, uh, you know, primary sclerosing cholangitis. Now, as we go from left to right, the liver involvement is decreased and the gallbladder involvement is increased. And as we go from left to right, the response to steroids also decreases. The response to steroids also decreases. So autoimmune hepatitis is the most uh, responsive to steroids while primary sclerosing cholangitis is the least responding to steroids. Okay, so that is important. Now AIH, AIH autoimmune hepatitis is grossly divided into two parts, AIH1, AIH2. So AIH1 is ANA positive. Okay, it is anti-nuclear antibody positive. And anti-smooth muscle, anti-SM antibody positivity is seen in AIH1. While in AIH2, anti-LKM1, liver, kidney, microsome 1, LKM1 and anti-LC1. So LKM1 is liver, kidney, microsome. LC is liver cytosol type 1, liver cytosol type 1. So, these are the two antibodies that are commonly seen in patients. Okay. Now, AIH1 has a majority of the patients of AIH1. So, a majority of patient of AIH1 usually have a insidious onset. Insidious onset. Majority of patients have insidious onset where you have fatigue, malaise, decrease in weight, decrease appetite, anorexia, joint involvement, jaundice, amenorrhea, abdominal pain, all that, you know, uh, insidious onset is commonly seen okay they might have pale stools dark urine pale stool dark urine so it is a slow onset and 25 percent of the patients uh 25 percent of the patients have uh, 25 percent of patients of ntlkm2 have insidious onset but 25 percent of them have a stormy onset okay acute Hepatic encephalopathy. Hepatic encephalopathy at the beginning can be seen. So, severe disease is more common with AIH2. And again, the response to, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the response to steroid is also, and the response to therapy also, AIH2 is, you know, having a variable response. Okay. So, this is very, very important. Now, associations of AIH2 are IgA deficiency and Addison's disease or APESED syndrome. Okay. APESED syndrome, APESED syndrome has chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis, autoimmune polyendocrinopathy, autoimmune polyendocrinopathy, hypo parathyroidism and and Addison's disease. So, around 40% of patients with AIH2 will have IgA deficiency, while 20 to 30% of patients with AIH2 will have presence of APESET syndrome. Both of them are associated with all autoimmune disease, including celiac disease, vitiligo, okay, then APS syndrome, then other syndromes like Bashet's disease, hemolytic diseases, 
glomerular nephritis all autoimmune disease only the specific two ones are i have noted down over here so this is the important point that you need to know treatment drug of choice drug of choice is actually combination of prednisolone plus azathioprine plus minus azathioprine so as it as a thioprine has two uses first it is an adjective therapy second it is a steroid sparing therapy but as a thioprine is contraindicated with cirrhosis though it is uh, used here cirrhosis okay so though it is used over here in liver failure as a thioprine itself is mildly hepatotoxic so there are chances that as a thioprine itself might cause cirrhosis so in very severe cases as a thioprine is to be you know not used if the patient does not respond to the uh, respond to this, then prednisolone plus mycophenolate mofetil is the second line followed by prednisolone plus acrolimus followed by prednisolone plus rituxima. So this is the management. Once you have started the therapy, you have to give you have to monitor for at least three years. You have to monitor the trans is for at least three years. And if the patient is stable for three years, then you can attempt to decrease the drugs or, you know, uh, you can uh, make sure that you can discontinue the drug. Uh, you have to understand that relapse, uh, 40, the, the chances of relapse is around 45% in AIH2, 45%, while it is around 20% in AIH1. So this is what you need to know. That's all for today, guys. I hope you like the video. And if you like the video, if you like the way I'm teaching, please make sure you download my app. I have amazing courses over there for you. And uh, make sure you follow me on my all the social, me social media handles. And you check out my website. All the links are in description below. So I will see you in the next one. Thank you.